Hi everyone, welcome to this next section that builds on from our introduction into the artificial intelligence driven orthodontics. Now we're going to talk about dental monitoring and how to establish protocols so that it automates your responses the correct way. Now you might run a practice differently to me, so you might have to customize your messages a lot more than we do um, and say different things. But let me just show you what we do, okay? And these are available from Dental Monitoring. Any of you want to establish Dental Monitoring, please reach out to the company and you can have my protocols. And they can also set them for you, right? So you don't have to worry about it, but let me give you the best scenario. So for example, we have a protocol for adult aligners, okay? And this protocol talks about go live. Go live means that it's going to automatically tell the patients on your behalf whether they can change the aligner or not change week by week as they submit their um, iPhone or smartphone selfies, right? So this week by week uh, communication is set by default from you. So for example, our protocol for adult aligners is we start everybody on seven day changes. So every seven days, the dental monitoring app unlocks and reminds the patient to take a smartphone video selfie, which we call as a dental monitoring scan. Now, when the patient takes a scan, in case the aligners aren't tracking well, they get given a no-go. And this no-go is driven by artificial intelligence from behind the scenes dental monitoring company. And this no-go then triggers another scan in three days, because the idea is that I believe if in seven days they're having tracking failures, let's give them another three days and look at it in 10 days, right? I don't want to double the time. I want to see if 10 days is enough to get the teeth tracking better. So what if they have satisfactory, uh, satisfactory aligner tracking? Well, if they have satisfactory aligner tracking, my protocols say, do you know what? Don't even tell me about it. You know, keep it silent. I don't want you to tell me every week the patient's tracking well. Um, I want you to tell the patient, go, change to your next aligner. And what you see here down the bottom is the, the number one to number six are actually a variety of different messages. So they're random messages selected by dental monitoring. So there's always a different message sent to them. It doesn't look robotic. So for example, we have a message number one that will say, wow, we can see you're doing a superb job. You can now change your aligners. Or number two, your teeth are looking great and so is your smile. You can now progress to a next aligner. Good job. You know, number four, congratulations. You can change your aligners. Yay, yay, yay. So you can create up to 100 or unlimited random messages that say the same thing. The beauty of this is it doesn't look robotic. So the patient feels like there's always a slightly different message being sent to them every time they get a go. Because um, if they just get robotic the same message it, it does look like you're not even looking in the background right now if this is the case i ask dental monitoring i put a special instruction for the patient in my dashboard and i say um, look if there's no tracking failures please alert me every four months in treatment because i want to make sure that i don't miss this patient i want to see virtually everything you may decide to see this every eight months, uh, every eight weeks. So it's really on your practice um, protocols. What if they get a slight unseat? Okay, you can choose which teeth to disclude. So if I get a slight unseat on any of the primary teeth, I don't care. If I get a slight unseat on lower molars, I don't care. Lower molars will have slight unseat many times, okay, especially when they're erupting. So I don't really want dental monitoring to alert me for slight unseeds for these teeth. So I've actually told them to exclude the teeth. But I've told them, look, give me an information or some warning in my dashboard when there's a slight unseed. And what I want my team to do, so I've got instructions to my team. My team has to copy this notification in the patient chart. Okay, they have to copy this every day. But what does the patient get? The patient gets a message to not change their aligners because now we have detected a slight unseat, okay? The definition of slight unseat is that the aligner fit is not consistent with satisfactory treatment tracking and that it's visible at a distance of 30 centimeters. 
So it's good to slow them down. If you detect slight unsee, so here's one of our messages. Again, we've got random messages. So the first message is your teeth aren't ready to move to the next aligner. Please remain wearing the current set of aligners for a few more days. We will check again in three days time. You will receive a notification via DM app. Please take your scan sets and we'll advise you in three days whether to change your aligners. So they know very well what's happening. They don't get anxious. They don't get worried, you know, and actually please advise your patients that if they ever get a no-go, it's not a bad thing, that it is okay, that it's not something they've done wrong. It, this can happen a lot during their treatment. Okay, what if the slight unseat is still present? If it's consistently present, well, I think, to be honest, a slight unseat consistently present doesn't have to constantly slow down the aligner changes. It could be that the two dimensions are very small. It could be multitudes of reason, okay? So for a really slight unseat, um, especially if it's generalized, I really don't care much. If it's consistently present, um, I'm happy for the patient to keep changing aligners, but now we've added a final recommendation called use the chewies, okay? Because they have some slight unseed that's still there. It hasn't gone away. Um, we're still, you know, we're happy for them to progress, but we now want them to use chewies. What if there's a noticeable unseat? Well, that's pretty bad. Noticeable unseat is like about a, you can see it from a distance of a meter. You can see it from far. So that means a tooth is not tracking. So I want to get a red alert in my dashboard. So every morning I look at the red alerts before I look at any other alerts. Um, you know, we have to look at the clean check now. We might have to open it, see how many aligners left. Why is this tooth got a noticeable unseat? Um, I need to be notified if my team are looking at it. And we've got to really look at this case, what we have to do. So this goes case by case basis, but I as the doctor have to be notified. Now, noticeable unseat, if the next appointment is treatment finish, um, we may have to um, basically look at doing some sort of revision or case refinement. They probably will not be a finish if there's a noticeable unseat, okay? But if the next appointment is, you know, not a finished treatment, it's not as critical, we could catch it in refinement. So let's have a look at this case. We got a notification from dental monitoring saying um, that this patient, um, the next appointment is treatment finish and that they had noticeable unseat on multiple teeth. So when we look at these noticeable unseat, we looked at the views. So the same day patient has taken a scan with aligners on and one without aligners. So when you see the scan without aligners, you can see that it's looking pretty good to finish. Maybe the reason they had multiple unseats, probably they didn't push their aligners enough on their mouth when they took the scan, or possibly short clinical crown heights. So short clinical crown heights tend to have more unseats than normal crown heights. So it could just be a resultant of that, but when you look at it without aligners, it looks good, okay? So noticeable unseat, look, whenever there's one, we try to slow them down. They should not progress to the next stage of their treatment or their next aligner unless and until they've really done lots of chewies. Now, one thing we do, we embed YouTube videos. So we've got a YouTube video showing patients how to do chewies, right? So we're leading them to our YouTube channel. What that also means, we get increased clicks on our YouTube channels, better for marketing. So you can embed lots of YouTube videos from your practice channel showing them what to do, how to brush, how to use chewies. And we do get a lot of clicks on that. I, I ask my patients to love the no-goes. Whenever they get a no-go, don't change your aligner. It's a, it's a good thing. We're slowing treatment down to make sure it's predictable and tracking well. So if you teach your patients to love the no-goes every now and then, they won't get worried. They won't get anxious. They won't think they've done something wrong. So this is a typical patient. You can see how they've got lots of green dots and lots of red dots. And in June, if you look at it in June, they had three no-goes in a row. So this patient was on the same aligner for quite a while, okay, almost two to three weeks. And that's okay, because until the teeth are really tracking and they've used chewies, it could be that it was their compliance. Those three weeks weren't good. It could be that the tooth movement was pretty complex and needed about two to three weeks to express 
Whatever the reason, that's okay. But once it's tracking, they can move on, okay? So as you see in this uh, photograph, an extraction case with second premolars removed, there's no dumping, there's literally teeth moving, walking, open by closing. So it's a really good progress um, for all our treatment objectives. And this is uh, important. What if they lose an attachment? Well, I think, you know, we don't need to bother our patients. So the message to the patient is go, you can keep going, don't worry, okay? But my team now needs to order an attachment template, okay? We also need to see if that attachment's needed. Sometimes you don't need the attachment to be put back on, so you can ignore it. If there's only two aligners left, you're not gonna bring the patient in to put an attachment, right? So you need to open ClinCheck and see how many aligners left. Um, what if there's a loss of button? Well, that really depends if the patient is wearing elastics. Maybe their uh, class one canine is corrected now or, or, you know, they don't need elastics. So if they don't need elastics, you don't need to bond the button back. Um, they can still keep changing their aligners. You can bring them in two to three weeks, uh, but just make sure if they're wearing elastics, that if a button comes off, they stop wearing the elastic on the other side. You never wear elastics asymmetrically unless that's what's being prescribed. So they can still keep changing their liners, but you just need to make sure that this button needs to be bonded and you can bond it in two to three weeks. Okay, very important. The patient knows you are, if they lose a button, okay, please do not be concerned if you're not wearing elastics or rubber bands. Okay, so they know if they're not wearing it. But if they're wearing elastics or rubber bands, then they actually must contact you. So what we're going to do now, we're going to look at some more cases to highlight the importance of dental monitoring in a couple of our advanced cases. So I'll see you shortly to go through a couple of cases.